So in the innovation labs of SmartStream, we are doing several machine learning uh, projects at the moment. Um, so we, ha we do have the reconciliation solution where we looked at different use cases. So we see that there are some big pain points for our customers. One is like the data quality that typically is not so good. If you reconcile bad data quality, you get lost lots of uh, exceptions and machine learning can be nicely used to increase the data quality. And then there's another use case that looks at um, uh, reference numbers and how we can better match reference numbers that do not do not perfectly match. Um, then we have on the cash and liquidity product we, we are looking at predicting balances, predicting data so you can that cash managers can better predict uh, the next day or the next two days. So we had machine learning models specifically trained for that. And in our fee solution, invoices and fee solutions, we see a lot of still paper-based workflows. And paper-based always means a lot of efforts with humans had to type in reference numbers, amounts and currencies. And uh, with machine learning, we can optimize that. So, so that's, that's really nice. And how long has a smart stream been involved with AI? We started that end of last year to look at the first use cases. And then we found out that there's really a potential for uh, cost savings and for, um, for more efficiency in our product. So we, we founded the Innovation Lab uh, earlier this year. It's a lab where data scientists specifically focused on machine learning and AI technologies look at our products and they reinvent and look at the workflows and so they have the freedom to really uh, innovate in our products and, and uh, yeah, at the moment we are working on 11 use cases where my data scientists look into the details. And for me it's all about defining the use case. So there's no question that uh, certain technologies are overhyped. There's no question that certain technologies aren't necessarily best used in a wide range of use cases. But if you're really careful at defining the use case and you pick it properly and you understand it, then they may, may be very, very useful. So, you know, so, so for me, it's, it's, it's always about defining the use case. It's always about starting with the market problem, what's the thing we're trying to solve for, and then what's out there that can help us solve that problem. And then you get into the more technical pieces, which is the actual execution. How do you do this without boiling the ocean or creating excess of complexity? which in a large structured organization like ours sometimes is a bit challenging. At the moment in the lab we use um, machine learning technologies which basically look at data, learn from that data and then they can predict uh, data or they can uh, understand that data. Um, artificial intelligence is, is the next evolution really because artificial intelligence means that technology will be self-aware, so it's more a technology that, that, that uh, it's, it's more a philosophical term than a technical term, because then technology will understand why it is doing something. So maybe we will see in, a, in five or ten years the first real AI technology surfacing. There, there are some, some, uh, some ideas how we can do that, but then that's, that's going to be a very interesting point in, in, in the banking space. Because basically what we do at the moment is we can emulate uh, what users do, what the business does, what workflows does, but then we will see um, technology that will self-understand the workflows and it, will can, and it can then run workflows without having a lot of data on that. I think our job, right, as advisors uh, to our clients, uh, is to be a little bit critical about these things, right? And try to really understand what's the problem you're trying to solve. Let me give you an example. So we've seen lots and lots and lots of proof of concepts on blockchain. Some of them seem fairly reasonable, some of them are fairly outlandish, right? Now, we ourselves were involved in a proof of concept with a Fortune 100 non-bank financial institution. I spent the first two hours of a meeting with the senior management of this organization trying to talk them out of doing this 
because the outcome was going to be a product that wasn't commercializable for, right? for a whole host of reasons. Now, it doesn't mean you don't do the proof of concept. What it means is that you have to decide that the outcome of the proof of concept, what you're going to learn from it, is valuable enough to pursue it because you know it's not commercializable. So we actually did the work, we partnered very closely, we executed, and for the first time Deutsche Bank actually produced, out of a blockchain environment, we produced production payments, right, in our production environment, which for the leading bank, you know, we're the leading euro clear in the world, we're the number one dollar clear outside of the top five US banks. When you say you're making payments in production, that says something, right? Um, and we did this very successfully. Completed the proof of concept, satisfied the client, closed it down, and there it sits. The walk away from that one is the learnings around you know, how do you build the API bridges to be able to lift, for example, the MT, the payment instructions out of the distributed ledger uh, program. Uh, how do you actually execute? How do you reconcile? So while the product itself that we developed, the solution wasn't commercializable, the learnings right, of the process, the discovery that we went through of how to make the various bits and pieces actually work and do what they're supposed to do, was exactly a huge step in preparing us for <coughs> whatever other blockchain application comes next because now we've seen it before. If you look at the, at the reasons why you lose, use blockchain, it, it's always when you have different parties working together on the same data, but nobody should own the data, so it's decentralized data, and you want to optimize workflows. And we have seen that in the trade finance space, how they very efficiently could optimize the, 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 the workflows in trade finance. And we have the same in, in, in so many other smart stream products. So at the moment we are exploring one after the other, but of course we can just do so much. Yeah? So uh, at the moment we look at the most potential use cases and then one after the other product will try to you know, establish also blockchain.